Hey everybody, DJ here again. Welcome back to week four of our series called Identity. We've just passed the halfway mark on this series. And uh, if you're still with us, I hope God is doing something amazing in your heart as he's been doing in my heart. So we are in our identity books and we are on page 11 and you can work through it with me. Let's quickly do a recap. In week two, we spoke about the fact that I am his child, missing word. I'm his son and I'm his daughter. Last week, we spoke about the fact that I am his servant, missing word there, servant. He is my master, son and servant on different sides of the coin. Today, we are talking about this. I am a saint. He is my savior. Now, I've picked this word because it is a Bible word. You are probably thinking, I know the saint, this person or that person in history. And I know about the church buildings that uh, are named after saints. But do you know that the Bible actually refers to anyone who has their faith in Christ as a saint? In Ephesians 1 verse 1, Paul writes this to the people in the church of Ephesus. And he says, to the saints, missing word, who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. The NIV translated as God's holy people. Because that's what make, being a saint means, is being a holy person. Now, just maybe you think it's just the people in Ephesus that are these holy people and he's writing to them as the saints. Paul writes to the next chapter, to the next book in the Bible, in, in Philippians, he writes to them, and it's in Philippians 1 verse 1, to all the saints, missing words there, in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi. Again, the missing word, saints. Now being part of holy people doesn't mean all the people were perfect and had no issues. Part of the reason Paul was writing this letter to these saints or these holy people was to correct some of the things that they were doing. The back half of both of these books in Ephesians and in Philippi, it is Paul saying, guys, in light of all that Christ has done, we need to change how we are doing things. But his premise is this, and this is the premise of the Bible. We need to understand our position in Christ, missing word, and that will transform our practice in Christ. So our position in Christ is subject of the series, our identity in him, who we are because of who he is. And even then, once we understand that, well, that greatly impacts our outward working of our lives, our practice, if you like. To take the idea of being a saint and to put it in another way, we could say this, Christ has forgiven me, missing word, and made me holy. He is busy transforming me and making me holy. Missing words, forgiven and transforming. Christ has forgiven me and he is making me holy. He is busy transforming me and making me holy. This is one of the profound ideas in the Bible. That when I put my faith in Christ, all the holiness of Jesus gets credited to my account. When God sees me, he sees Christ because of my faith in him. I'm in Christ, but behind the picture is me. And I still got a lot of work that needs to happen on my character. And so he has made me holy, but he's also making me holy. He's transforming me day by day. Now, I'm sure if you are to be brutally honest with yourself, We've got to admit there's a lot of transforming that needs to take place in our lives. Although I'm a saint because of my faith in Christ, I don't always feel like a saint and I don't always act like a saint. In fact, some of my behavior and my thoughts are far from what God has got for me. And so God is at work in our lives. We are on a journey, but along the journey, we make mistakes. We commit what the Bible calls sins. And so the topic for today is this. How 
do I deal with those mistakes? Topic for today. Now, when it comes to dealing with our sinful mistakes, I've noticed that we can either make too much or too little of them. To put them in the right order of your continuum here, so too little of them on the left-hand side and too much of them on the right-hand side. So we're looking for what does it look like to properly deal with our mistakes. But let's talk about how not to deal with them. When I make too little of my mistakes, I don't pay them enough attention. Here are some signs of making too little of my sinful mistakes. I defend sinful mistakes behind a multitude of excuses, missing with them, and arguments, including I'm, I'm only human. God's grace means I can do whatever I want. I've heard some people say this, I don't really care what the Bible says, I'm choosing my own way. Another sign of making too little of our sinful mistakes is that I get defensive, missing word. Whenever someone else points out something that I did wrong, I don't know about you, maybe not anybody listening, but I know I get defensive. If I make too little of mistakes, I don't readily admit to any of my mistakes. Either I seldom apologize to others, or I simply apologize just to get rid of that person. I don't really mean it. I don't really trouble me when I did it. I just want to be rid of them. Another sign of making too little of my mistakes is this, that I have deep down believed God is quite fortunate to have me following him. So the missing words there is excuse, defensive, and fortunate. Now, on the other side, there's other people who make too much of their sinful mistakes. And I'll explain that. These are the signs of making too much of them. Firstly, I live with an unshakable sense of condemnation. Missing word, condemnation. That simply won't go away. This feeling, this sense haunts me and taunts me and wants me to believe that there's simply no way that God could look with love and approval on me. Another sign of making too much of my sinful mistakes is that I feel like I've pushed God into a corner with my repeated failure and I've come to a place of despair or self-content. I dislike myself constantly because of my sin and my mistakes. Or the third sign is I feel that God is upset with me and he just tolerates, missing word there, merely puts up with me. I don't know your story as you're listening to this, but chances are that we either fall into one of these two categories, making too little of our sinful mistakes or making too much of them. And so how do we go about properly dealing with our sinful mistakes? Not making too little, but equally not making too much. Learning to live in this amazing forgiveness. And I'd like to suggest firstly that we need to regularly reflect on Christ's radical sacrifice. Missing word, sacrifice. Regularly reflect on Christ's radical sacrifice. When I think about and process and the truth that Jesus Christ, in order to deal with my sin, he didn't just have to hand over some money or bargain or deal or do something. He literally had to give his life for me because the penalty of my sin was death. In order for me to be forgiven, he had to be punished. In order for me to live free, he had to die. The weightiness of Christ's incredible sacrifice helps me understand how bad sin is and how amazing good our Savior is. Have you ever sing a song at church about his goodness, about his grace and what he has done for you? And just all of a sudden, you get that realization of what he has done for you, that ultimate price and penalty that he has paid for us. And you realize that it was my sin that has put him there. Sin should not be taken lightly, should not just be swept under the carpet, not just, I'm, I'm human. No way. Jesus died for it. I don't want to make too little of it. One of the things that most churches practice and is biblical is the breaking of bread. 
We do it at a Sunday service. We do it in our small groups where people go and they use the elements of bread and, and juice. And that is a reminder of what Christ has done for us. Dying on the cross and paying our penalty. Dying for our sin. The second way of dealing with our sinful mistakes is to ask God to shine His light onto the areas that displeases Him. Missing word there, displease. Ask God to shine His light on areas that displease Him. Listen to these amazing verses. John tells us in 1 John 1, 5, God is light. And Ephesians 5, verse 8 and verse 9, Live as children of the light. And a bit further in the verse, it says, and find out what pleases the Lord. Missing word. I don't know if you've ever done some work outside in the garden. I don't know if you've ever made something that you were busy with your hands. When you go afterwards and you wash your hands, you don't think it's that dirty. But as soon as you start putting the water, you realize how much dirt there was as you were busy working. That's what happens when the light of God shines into our soul. We become quite used to our sinful mistakes. We treat them as part of our character. But when any of us with humility says, Lord, who is light? Please shine that light onto me. An amazing thing happens. He reveals those things to us. And some of it can be quite devastating. There have been occasions where God has revealed to me that some of my actions were based out of radical pride and arrogance. I had no idea that was inside of me. I was undone. There have been other times where God has revealed that some of my actions that I was doing, I thought for Him, were actually based out of insecurities. They were approval-seeking rather than doing it just because God had guided me to do it. I was undone. Dirt on my hands. God, please forgive me of these things. And as God shines his light, he only ever does that because he loves us and he wants us to grow. He made us holy and is committed to making us holy. Which brings me to point number three. I need to confess my sins. Confess. Once I've reflected on Christ, sacrifice, and God shown His light on any area of my life. And that can happen through the day, the weeks, the months, the years ahead. I then need to very simply confess my sin, which means to acknowledge it, I own it, I tell God I don't want to live like this anymore. Confession of sin doesn't mean we suddenly become perfect. But it's a way of looking backwards and acknowledging, God, that wasn't right. You've shown your light here. I am deeply, deeply sorry. Please forgive me. Listen to this amazing verse in 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purifies us from all unrighteousness. People who make too much of their sin often lack this step. They don't move forward, which brings me to the fourth point, which is walk free. Romans 8 verse 1 says this, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remember earlier on, we filled in the word condemnation, which means to be condemned. To be like we hammer ourselves over and over again because of our mistakes. Paul says, if you are in Christ and he has forgiven you, that there is no need for that feeling of condemnation. We can walk free. What an amazing feeling. What an incredible thing to realize that when I've confessed my sins, my sinful mistakes to God, instantly he forgives me about those particular things. And I walk forward and he doesn't ever mention it again. I might still be thinking about it. And there might be a journey I've got to walk out of. My mistakes have caused pain to others. Corrie ten Boom puts it like this. Corrie ten Boom was a Dutch Jewish Christian. And she was put in a Nazi concentration camp in World War II. Because the family provided hiding place for the Jewish people 
who were escaping at that time. But she said this, God buries our sin in the depths of the sea and puts up a sign that reads, no fishing. Don't you love that? When I confess my sins to God, some of us have messed up big time and we think God will never forgive us. If I understand the truth once I've repented of my sin, confessed it to him, he forgives it. And to borrow Corey's um, words here, he buries our sin in the depths of the sea and then sticks up the sign, no fishing allowed. Very often, the devil wants to go fishing and raise those things up and remind me and you. He might use the words of, you're useless. You're not worthy. You'll never amount to anything. We can go back to God's word and say, God has buried my sin in the depths of the sea. Psalm 103. And Corrington Boom's word, he puts up a sign that says, no fishing. If Jesus Christ had forgiven it, that settles it. I don't need to revisit it. If you're leaning to make too little of your mistakes, then your prayer should be, Father, please help me to see my life more through your eyes. And if your mistake is to make too much of your sinful mistake, our prayer should be, God, help me to see my life through your eyes. Help me to understand the gravity of my sin, but also to understand that you have forgiven and I can walk forward in freedom. Why don't we pray together? Father, we thank you so much that even as we read this, we are so aware that you have paid the ultimate price for us, that we may walk in freedom. And my prayer is that we would not make too little or too much of our sin, but that we'll understand this, that you have set us free and that we can walk in that freedom. Thank you that we are your saints. Thank you that you are making us holy and that we are walking in it every day, learning more, growing more, becoming more and more like you. I pray as we grow into our groups now that you will just settle this in our hearts, that you are busy working it in and through our lives. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Enjoy your discussions in your groups. Thank you.